The mighty city of Vancouver, located in southwestern British Columbia in Canada. According to the 2021 census, the city's population has risen to 662,000 people. Zoom out a bit and you'll find the Greater Vancouver area with a population of 2.6 million, ranking it as the third largest metropolitan area in Canada. And that's not all. If we factor in the Fraser Valley, the region boasts a population of over 3 million. Vancouver has the highest population density in all of Canada. Over 5,700 people packed into every square kilometer. It's the fourth highest in North America, trailing behind only New York, San Francisco and Mexico City. Vancouver is a vibrant tapestry of cultures and languages. It proudly wears the badge of being one of the most ethnically and linguistically diverse cities in Canada. A staggering 49.3% of its residents are not native English speakers. And get this, 47.8% are native speakers of neither English nor French. Vancouver was founded in the mid-19th century as a sawmill settlement called Gastown. Initially, it became famous due to two prominent gold rushes. So the city served as a supply hub and transportation center for miners heading to the gold fields. As a result, it became the destination of the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1886 and saw rapid growth ever since. It was renamed Vancouver after the British captain, George Vancouver, who had explored and surveyed the coasts in 1792. Today, the city is famous for its stunning geographical features, diverse culture, flourishing economy, and a hip urban lifestyle, making it one of the most livable places on the planet. At the same time, it's a rather dreadful city, with horrible traffic, a housing crisis, drug problems, all that good stuff. Vancouver is renowned for its significant rainfall throughout the year, making it one of the wettest cities in Canada. Its proximity to the Pacific Ocean and its location within the temperate rainforest biome contribute to its abundant precipitation. The prevailing weather patterns such as the Pacific Ocean's moisture-laden air colliding with the coastal mountains create ideal conditions for rainfall. The annual rainfall in Vancouver averages around 1,200 millimeters, that is 47 inches, with the wettest months typically being November and December. On the other hand, Vancouver has a mild climate compared to many other parts of Canada, with average temperatures ranging from around 0 to 8 degrees Celsius, between 32 and 46 degrees Fahrenheit. It rarely snows in the city, although nearby mountain areas do receive snowfall. Summers are pleasantly warm, with average temperatures ranging from around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Overall, Vancouver's climate is relatively temperate, making it a comfortable place. But while Vancouver's climate is great, the city may not be for everyone. With more and more people moving to Vancouver to work, and with more than 40% of the city's population being comprised of immigrants, the traffic situation has become worse than ever. In fact, Vancouver has the worst traffic in North America after Mexico City, New York and Toronto. The demand for transportation increases, leading to congestions on roads and highways, especially in the city's major urban areas. Although Vancouver has an extensive public transportation system, including buses, SkyTrain and even C bus, the capacity of these systems is strained. Another challenge you would have to face when moving to Vancouver is the housing crisis, which has made finding an affordable place to live not realistic. With a lack of affordable housing, increased demand and escalating prices, many people need help finding accommodation that fits their budget. Even middle class families are finding it hard to secure affordable housing. This is one of the reasons why some immigrants end up settling in the downtown east side, also known as DTES. It is known as the poorest and most dangerous side of the city, an urban squalor, home to many people afflicted with drug and alcohol addiction and HIV, and other social issues, which would make Tyrion Lannister happy. Sorry, I've recently started reading Game of Thrones. The infamous Canadian serial killer, Robert Picton, found most of his victims on this side of the city's red light district. Many people still get surprised to learn about these negative aspects, mainly because Vancouver has such a good reputation. The city government has been doing its very best to solve these issues. For example, the city is promoting alternative forms of transportation 
and investing in infrastructure to address traffic problems, while increasing the availability of affordable housing and putting rent controls in place are all part of the effort to solve the housing crisis. On the issue of drug addiction, the city government is focused on harm reduction techniques, including supervised injection sites. There, medical professionals help addicts safely inject heroin into their veins. This is Insight, a supervised illicit drug injection facility in Pigeon Park, downtown Vancouver, where addicts can legally inject heroin with the help of a medical professional. This is the first safe injection site in all of North America. The assisted drug injection program was set up because Vancouver dealt with the highest HIV rate in the developed world about 20 years ago. Since it opened in 2003, Insight has been helping to keep the city's drug problem in check. It has also helped reduce fatal overdoses and HIV infections. Okay, now about a different sort of drug. Amidst the hustle and bustle of Vancouver, there is one quality that makes the challenge of finding a place to live and navigating the traffic all worth it, the work-life balance. In the 2022 Global Work-Life Balance Index report by Kissy, Vancouver ranks 16th. Rent and other living costs may be a pain, but at least you can take a deep breath and enjoy life, as air quality is basically perfect, while the happiness, culture and leisure scores are also very solid. In the early 20th century, Japanese immigrants, mainly from the southern regions of Japan, began settling in Vancouver. They were drawn to the city by economic opportunities, such as fishing, logging and farming. One of the notable aspects of the Japanese-Canadian community in Vancouver was the establishment of Japantown. Japantown quickly became a bustling neighborhood, characterized by shops, restaurants, community centers and social clubs. However, the community faced discrimination and xenophobia, particularly during World War II. You see, following the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, the Canadian government enacted strict measures against Japanese Canadians, driven by fear and racism. The government designated Japanese Canadians as enemy aliens and implemented policies that resulted in their forced removal and internment. Under the War Measures Act, over 22,000 Japanese Canadians, the majority of whom were Canadian citizens, were forcibly relocated from the coastal areas of British Columbia. They were subjected to harsh living conditions in internment camps, often far from their homes and possessions. This forced displacement had a lasting impact on their communities resulting in the loss of property, businesses and social connections. After the war, many Japanese Canadians faced challenges in rebuilding their lives and reclaiming their homes and properties. In recent decades, efforts have been made to recognize and acknowledge the injustices faced. The Japanese-Canadian Redress Agreement, signed in 1988, officially apologized for the internment. And did you know that the port of Vancouver is not just any port? It holds the prestigious title of being the largest port in Canada and the fourth largest in North America when it comes to the volume of cargo it handles. It serves as a critical link in the global supply chain, facilitating trade between Canada and over 170 economies worldwide, basically almost all of them. Vancouver is also known as the Hollywood of the North, where lights, camera and action thrive in its bustling film industry, with stunning locations that can double for anywhere in the world. And you can't miss the eye of the wind, a turbine on Grouse Mountain. It not only generates renewable energy, but also serves up mind-blowing views from the top. Vancouver not only gave us beautiful scenery, but also the gift of Botox, thanks to a couple of brilliant doctors. Some parts smooth, some parts rough and a few dashes of weirdness for good measure. Despite all its challenges and quirkiness, it's safe to say it remains to be the dream destination of many. Vancouver's government may soon find a long-term and sustainable solution to its housing and traffic problems. And efforts to improve its drug situation seem to be paying off, as some cities in the United States entertain the idea of following suit. Next, you need to learn about Squamish. You don't even have to drive, you just have to click right there. In the middle of the screen, right there, dingy ding. And this is my Patreon map. Everyone featured here has sponsored my channel directly, and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you all. Geoperspective, out.